In this video, I'll demonstrate how Mercury worm works. This is a, a variant in this case. So the worm will spread over email, peer-to-peer -peer networks, and internet relay chats. Now, those are three are actually from peer-to-peer -peer clients, so try to stay away from any kind of sponsored offers in the future. Now, for the emails, I'll use uh, Microsoft Outlook, and I'll check out the outbox where the worm will try to drop it it's uh, emails uh, that will be sent to the other client in here so it sh I should be able to see the emails in, in here now for peer-to-peer -peer networks I have Bearshare, eDonkey2000 and Kaza now Kaza and eDonkey are quite dead networks in this case so I cannot actually use them online but for Bearshare at least it uses uh, Gnutella in some way and it's still kind of able to com communicate over a local network so I should be able to connect uh, to between those two, two machines in this case now the files for Bersho should be located in here for Redonkey in here, in the list and then for Kaza in, in here now I'll, I'll open them in Explorer just give, give me a moment so in here, so in here, the files will be dropped for sharing them over BearShare. And here it's for in incoming in eDonkey2000. And for Kaza, it's my shared folder in here. So in here, there should be at least two files that will be dropped in this case. Now for local ones, uh, there, are few, there are few places in this case. So in C drive, it will drop a file called autoexec.exe, which is also the copy of the worm. But in Windows folder, it will actually drop three files. Just let me move this up a bit so you can maybe see. So let me check first. So yeah, it will actually drop a notepad.exe, which will overwrite the actual notepad program it will also drop hold on, the task pen which is actually task switcher so if you actually try to open that uh, program and when the actual when the worm runs it will actually run the worm itself again same same apply same applies to the worm in this case and finally it will also drop a screensaver.exe that file will be used to send a copy of uh, the worm through internet relay chat using MRC now for MRC there is one more thing in here so the worm will actually create a script.ini uh, file which will be used for MRC to, sp uh, to spread the worm in this case let me just set this up so you can see all the, the possible changes wait that's this this might be too high you need to see the emails, the script, and one more thing is left. I think it's in the system folder. So in here it will actually drop a av update.exe. It should be in it should be hidden. And that file should be used for sending the the attached the, the attached copy of the worm in in email in this case. Uh, it might be also possible to, that uh, the worm will also add itself on startup but in this case when I've tried it it didn't work and there might be some other places where the worm might drop but in my case it's only dropping in, the, in this, this, these places so I'll try to run the worm now okay we got the emails we actually we got the files in here also so we have auto second here Let's see for the Windows folder. So we have a testman replaced, screen server exit dropped, and the notepad is here. Yeah. So I also the, now the worm has actually overwritten the notepad in this case. Now for the system, yeah, and there's AV update and there's script.ini. Now, but if I try to open it, it will actually run the worm again because because the notepad has been already overwritten uh, these two, two are actually batch programs that have kind of finished 
and they should be located in C drive, but uh, the worm actually deletes it uh, quite quickly, so I cannot actually show it in this case. Now let's uh, send the emails, and we should receive them in Outlook Express on this side. Let's open it, and see what it says. Here is a patch for your AV software, it will cover all the latest outbreaks of worms, etc. Worms as in virus, not earthworms, lol. Along with the attachment in this case. Same for the second email. There might be a possibility that where the worm uh, might send the message, but without the attachment. So that didn't occur at this moment, but it's still possible. Okay, now back to peer-to-peer -peer programs in this case. Just give me a moment to close most of it. Most of it. Let me just refresh this. Okay. So all three are in their places. Now we'll try to check Kaza. And now we can see that Kaza has two copies being shared, technically. So yeah, you have the title Winter to Mercury at MM, which I assume it's like mass mailer allies in some way. Artist is Internetic, mini type software, size 44 kilobytes, and file name is virtual sex simulator.exe and IP spoofer.exe, like in here. Now, if you try to check the metadata of the actual application, you can see the company name is actually the artist, Internetic, internal name is the internal name, then original file name, language English, product name as the title, and product version as the usual stuff. Now for eDonkey, now it should be listed in here. Let's see if it's even actually working. Okay, now it's now it shows. Even though it's kind of odd that it actually says the virtual sex simulator for both both files for some reason. And file type is pro, format exe, 44 kil kilobytes. That's pretty much it. I cannot actually connect uh, as as this is still kind of dead network in my case. So I cannot do any, anything in, in this situation for that. But for BearShare, it, there should be at least one way to show how it could actually spread. So we have a two files in here. That should be kind of still possible to, to transfer. So we'll open the BearShare on this side. Now we have to connect uh, both computers in this case. So I'll use the IP of that, of that first uh, machine. Now we'll connect. Okay, now we have an outer peer, something like that, uh, as, far as, as far as I could actually say. And in here we can actually see the incoming, and this out, and this is outgoing peer. Now in here I should be able to search for the files that are mentioned in here. So if I try searching for .exe, I can actually see the IP spoofer.exe, but not virtual sex simulator for some reason, even though. Even though Bersher is actually logging the hits in this case, you can see that there's one counter for each. So if I try to type in IP spoofer.exe, now you can see there are two hits for IP spoofer and that is actually logging in the search text. So this is the actual file and if I try to download it, it's going to fail because it needs more sources. So I assume that's uh, like you need a few more computers uh, to ver few more machines to actually verify if uh, the actual file is kind of complete and okay it's kind of most likely uh, like some kind of trust relationship in some way it's kind of difficult to explain it so you need a few more computers a few more machines that are sharing the same file to make sure that you can actually download it in some way or actually that everyone communicates with everyone that's kind of that's kind of how even torrent works in some way so this is still kind of something like that Basically, it's peer-to-peer, -peer, as, uh, as it says, on its own. So yeah, they cannot actually download the file. And we are pretty much dead in this case, but at least you have seen how, how this part works in this case. Now, the only thing that's left is the RC. So we'll use MIRC client to connect both cases. And in here we'll have to check the script. The script might be broken in this, in this case. Let me just check. Let me just first connect to the 
chat. Okay, I'll still stay in here until I finish up the script script part in this situation. So you can see that script in here is not visible at all, and that's because it's kind of broken. So actually, I actually cannot actually open it with Notepad, but I'll use Visual Studio in this case. So hold on a sec. Okay, so now I have to only type this. So that's the like the key part of any file that you should actually add so that this script actually works. So now, so now if I try to load, well, damn it, I know I've loaded the wrong thing. Okay, now it's loaded. Okay, so I'll try to explain the script how the script works. So when anyone when anyone joins the channel that you're in, and if it's uh, not your nickname, you the script will send a message to that user privately saying hi want a cool screensaver and then it will send a this and then it will send the, the copy of the worm to that user now if anyone else actually leaves the server using quit command then this script will actually say that i'm infected with uh, with the worm now for this one this one is kind of glitchy or actually buggy as this script will not actually run in this, in this case so when someone when someone types for example a b c d in this case uh the this script will actually send back b c d as uh, this command actually sends a message to the the current channel and this and it takes the second param parameter and all the remaining uh, stuff after that. So if I try to actually put it like this, then it will actually just write B. So, so we'll keep it like this and we'll move it uh, down here. Hold on a sec, I'll just clean this up and okay. Now for this one, when, actually, when someone says no in the channel, then this script will actually send a command to quit and it will respond to the user with a given nickname with the response uh, with the response i say yes and then the last of the worm actual name of the worm and outer so we'll just set this up okay now we're ready so now when i join the channel the worm will actually send a copy to this machine i'll accept and yeah it's here Okay, so this is the worm. You can you can see that uh, I've that I've actually sent a message to to John, but it's a private private message in this case. So you can see it in here. So even though if I try to say no, it nothing happens happens because the script, as I've said, it must be in the channel. So this is uh, this is the part where that's required in this case. So if I actually try to type no in here. Then, then I've then I've actually disconnected from the server, and then I say then I say from quit uh, command John Doe I say yes, and then the worm name printed to Mercury HTML by industry. Now let's connect back. It might take a while to connect, and we'll see how how this other parts will work. Okay, let me check the script again okay so so now we'll try quitting from here so if you try to quit okay so now i've quit and now i've actually said tom is infected with winter to mercury at mm by industry in this case so so in this case john has left and then i actually say that i'm infected every time when someone else quits from the server in this case now I'll try to infect uh, this machine from the, the downloaded copy of the worm in this case. Let me just check this and I'll, I'll cancel it for now and run the worm. Okay, so in this case I probably have a few drops of the worm in P2P clients uh, but not the email as it doesn't seem that uh, it spreads uh, by using Outlook Express but by using Microsoft Outlook in this situation. 
So I think you can even see nothing is in here. So and let me just check in here. Yeah, there is nothing. Just a, just a note, minor, minor note, note. Now let's actually edit the script that's been dropped. Oh, hold on, I need to edit it. So it, the good thing is that it, that it seems that on Windows Server 2003 or XP, it doesn't actually manage to overwrite Notepad in this situation. So we'll try script and save. Load. Fix this part, and now we should be able to actually show the the spamming part that I've actually tried to show. So I'll type the quick brown box jumps over the the lazy dog. Then the John, John says quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Fox jumps over the lazy dog. Jumps over the lazy dog. Over the lazy dog. The lazy dog. Lazy dog. Dog. So if you actually have like a few more people in here, that will cause a huge amount of spam and well, just a lot of trouble in this case. So yeah, now we could actually see if we try to quit. I actually quit saying no. I say no. Then, in this case, John leaves, I say that I'm infected, so let's connect back. Go back. Now I'm in, now this thing goes. Now let's, let's quit in here. Now I've quit, then now it says that John Doe is infected with the worm. Now let's let's connect back in here. You can see that have said that I've got actually a few more sc cool screen saver messages. And now when I join the channel, now I'm actually getting the prompt from John to actually get a copy of the worm. I've got the file and that's pretty much it. So now we have a lot of spamming. So we can, now we can actually see how the worm spreads over email, internet relay chat, and peer-to-peer -peer networks, more or less. So yeah, thanks for watching. That's it, and bye.